Thanks for that introduction, Lance. My name's Amy Hodler, Director of Graph Analytics and AI Programs. I wanna to talk to you more about the decisioning knowledge graphs, very exciting, but I wanna start with like why, why you should care. And it's really because the decisioning knowledge graph can help you answer the big questions that you have. So things like, uh, what's important in my data? What's influential? What's, uh, you know, what kind of things might be um, uh, influencing my customers? What's unusual? Are there patterns that, uh, anomalies that I can't see? And what's coming next as well? And the reason why this is important, the reason why graphs can help you do that is because they help you process and uncover, and uncover uh, the what's already in your data, the relationships and the connections and help you extract them out so you can, uh, as opposed to trying to an analyze by hand, so you can put them into um, different tools, different machine learning, different analysis and really make the most out of them. And the reason why graphs can help you do that is because relationships are one of the strongest predictors of behavior. There's a lot of research out there looking at that, and, and you might be familiar with James Fowler's book, Connected, where he was looking at trying to predict uh, things like behavior of somebody. In this case, in one case, it was about voting. So can I? how can I predict whether somebody's gonna vote or not? And what he found out this, was that there was a really strong signal in the relationships uh, and the relationships with people that you know and people that you don't know. So if you were trying to predict whether I would vote, uh, it might be uh, very predictive looking at just my demographics, like my age and my income, my zip code. But what James found was that it was actually more predictive to look at whether my friends and the friends of my friends voted. So if you imagine people that you don't know uh, or don't know well are actually more predictive of your behavior than your regular demographic information. And so we, we've we seen this over and over again that relationships are the strongest predictors of behavior, but you can't use them if you can't see them, if you can't grab them. And most data science techniques ignore relationships because it's, it's slow, error prone, and frankly, tedious and painful to do it by hand to kind of manually, manually engineer that connected features and grab that connected data and then put it in a format that machine learning demands. Um, that's very difficult to do with tabulated data and trying to do that by hand. But with graphs, because they're built on relationships, you don't have to guess at this correlation uh, you and manually find these connections and try to, to put them in the right format. The graphs actually contain, they're built on the relationships. And so you get that high signal information, more usable, more machine learning, more anal analytics friendly, if you will. And this isn't just kind of us trying to find a new, <laughs> new use for grass. We're seeing this in um, the research community. So machine learning and AI research, you can see, if your eyes are good, you can see somewhere around 2017 really took off in um, feature in adding in, um, uh, featuring graphs uh, for the machine learning and AI research. And not just in research, we're also seeing this uh, in uh, the uh, commercial space as well. So Gartner is saying that graphs form the foundation of modern data and, an and, data and analytics. Uh, and uh, um, in the, where graph techniques are prevalent, AI maturity is prevalent as well. And so at its highest, um, there, when maturity is highest, highest with teams in AI, um, they're, at, they're using 48% are using graph techniques. And so Neo4j, looking at the trend in the research, looking at the trend in the commercials, and quite frankly, our community asking us, uh, have uh, developed ways to support uh, machine learning and AI with decisioning knowledge graph. And there are really four areas that they that we support. And one is graph analytics. So that's where you're trying to answer questions. Uh, maybe you're using queries, maybe you're using algorithms, but you're trying to answer something you know specifically what you're looking for. Graph features for machine learning, that's when you're extracting out those connected features, those relationship data and the structure, and then putting it into a machine learning process that, that's outside of Neo4j. And then recently this year, we've added in in-graph machine learning as well. And this is where you're training a machine learning model inside of Neo4j to make uh, very graphy uh, predictions like predicting links and, and node classification. It's important to say we're not trying to be a general purpose machine learning uh, platform. We're not gonna be a TensorFlow. There's great tools out there for that. 
But if you are starting with a graph and you want to make predictions about your graph, uh, it's really wonderful to keep it in one platform, very efficient. Uh, the other fourth area that we also uh, support with uh, AI is context for AI. So AI systems are often trying to make heuristic uh, decisions and being able to provide that AI with things like chatbots with context, which it's operating in, uh, can make it more much more efficient. So if we want to look at a little bit quicker into uh, decisioning knowledge graph itself, let's look at uh, what that all, what that encompasses. And basically, if you are trying to use a knowledge graph for uh, analytics, machine learning, uh, exploration, domain expertise, um, analysis, uh, or an AI system, we consider that a decisioning knowledge graph because your ultimate goal is to make a better decision, whether it's a human making a better decision or it's another software agent making a better decision. And there's really four areas, uh, five areas, <laughs> that uh, are capabilities that are required for a robust decisioning knowledge graph. You've got to be able to do queries, and that's where you're, you are asking a very specific question. You get an answer in a way that you can understand. Uh, algorithms, so that's based on a predefined formula. The results are still human readable. Maybe it's a score about influence. Maybe it's a community ID, um, whatever that might be, but you can kind of understand those results. And then embeddings, where you have an AI learned formula and machine readable results. And so that's basically a specialized algorithm that, um, that compresses and represents uh, parts of your graph in a way that a machine learning system needs it to be. And so basically it's a, it's a vector of numbers. You get a row of numbers, doesn't mean anything to me, but it means a lot to machine learning process. And so those are where you start with a decisioning knowledge graph. And then you can use those out, those outputs to either visually explore things. Maybe you're a domain expert and you just want to do a review. Uh, you want to look at, um, all of the communities that are similar of certain colors, or maybe a score becomes the size of a node, but you're trying to kind of understand your data. And then you can also use all of that information, the queries, the algorithms, the embeddings results in a machine learning workflow and inside of Neo4j actually use it to make predictions as well. And so you might say, okay, um, what does Neo4j actually have? We've talked about what we support. Um, we have put together a graph data science framework. It starts with a Neo4j uh, database because you've, you, want your, you have to get your graph from somewhere and you want to store your results somewhere. And so doing it in a native graph database uh, makes it uh, very quick for queries and it allows you that persistence. The Neo4j Graph Data Science Library is where you have the analytics workspace. We do an automatic transformation into that format between storage and workspace. And we have a very scalable, robust analytics um, uh, workspace and graph algorithms. Some of the most advanced analytics and in, in-graph machine learning will be um, there in the GDS library. And then we also provide, provide Neo4j Bloom so you can visually understand your graph, you can collaborate, and you can prototype solutions as well. And so looking at, okay, what do people actually do with this? We've got just a couple examples. One example is Boston Scientific, trying to find and improve, find problems and improve their manufacturing results. And basically looking at an integrated supply chain, a very simple data model, and looking at components in an ad hoc kind of analysis. Something's gone wrong, how do I how do I find um, what the problems are? And so they use a knowledge graph to model their integrated supply chain and look for at fault and identify at fault issues in their very complex um, components and subcomponents. And they were able to really quickly pinpoint root, root causes of problems by looking at the components involved and reduce the query times from two minutes to seconds, which is amazing. And then they're also using graph algorithms to identify and eliminate um, bad combinations. So you, for some reason, some components together do just fine, and other components when grouped together had more failures. And so basically using the graph algorithms and looking at um, things with high centrality uh, and able to make anti-recommendations, which I find really interesting, actually. Uh, and then another, uh, another customer, Orbit MI, uh, doing route planning and optimization, basically a global container ship, a uh, large market, as you can see here, a $9 billion market. Um, but planning routes can be very difficult. And if you don't do them well, it can have um, time 
uh, money and of course, you know, just resource impact as well. And so using GDS pathfinding algorithms uh, to plan maritime routes based on distances, cost, and other internal logic of what was uh, a better route versus not such a good route. And they were able to basically use this, uh, use GDS on the back end to plan routes in under one second, which is amazing if you think about how complex uh, shipping and um, uh, container shipping uh, is. And using GDS in the back end, uh, we're able to provide an analytics platform to customers and uh, increase productivity significantly. You can see here by 60%, uh, have a, an amazing uh, return on investment for them. And then also, I think quite uh, impressive as well, save over 60,000 tons of carbon emissions as well by just doing better route planning. So some amazing results. And another uh, quick example is AstraZeneca with patient journey analysis. You can imagine how complex diseases evolve over time. Uh, if you think about diabetes, kidney disease, these things evolve over years. And they were able to use a knowledge graph to look at and bring together three years of visits, tests, diagnosis, tens of billions of records, and then use graph algorithms and machine learning together over that. And doing that approach, they were able to look at and I create, identify archetypical uh, patterns in these journeys and then use graph feature engineering to pull that information out and then put it into their other machine learning pipelines so that they could find similarities and journeys over time using community detection, which is kind of amazing. If we can know there are similarities between good journeys and bad journeys and then identify where people fit, we can intervene faster, which was their original goal. And so they also, in looking at intervening faster, they also looked at what touch points in the journey are most influential so they could figure out where to intervene first. So really some great examples. And these actually follow uh, the phases that a lot of people uh, see when they're adding graphs to their data science. So whatever stage you're at, um, if you're not at the knowledge graph stage, uh, that's where you want to start. Get your information in a graph and you can very quickly find patterns, patterns where you know what you're looking for. You know in your connected data, you have domain experts re researching and, and looking at this, you know there are certain things that you need to find. And then once you've done that, it's very easy to go to that next step and use graph algorithms to identify the things you don't know exactly what to look for, but you know you know the archetypical patterns, like you know the general association, maybe you know the data shape, um, you know what trends that, uh, that you might wanna look for and you can kind of pull those out. And then once you've uh, gone from your decisioning knowledge graph and you're using graph algorithms, you can also do more advanced native graph machine learning. And that's where it learns from the graph itself to predict what's going to happen next. Uh, and you, this, this can be link prediction, and you might use link prediction to, produce, to predict whether a new customer coming in is going to buy a product or node classification. So is this, is this person coming into, um, into my financial uh, network, are they likely to be classified as a fraudster or not? And then you know maybe I wanna flag and watch things a little closer, or maybe you're filling in missing data. So it's data you just didn't, you weren't able to record um, there's connections between things that you just don't have in your your data. And so if I if I kind of summarize like why people want to use graphs and uh, machine learning and analytics to, together, it basically basically comes down to making better predictions with the data you already have. So I mentioned before, traditional machine learning often ignores this next network structure, the relationships because it's difficult to extract. and that's that's like tossing data out. And every, Every data scientist I've ever talked to has always said, if I had better data, if I had more data, I can make better predictions. And so with graphs, uh, we get to use relationships and, and pretty much double dip on the data we have, the existing data and the relationship data that we have, but we aren't using. And to unlock um, predictions that maybe we otherwise couldn't because we weren't actually looking at the relationships themselves. And we add more diversity to the data as well. And so, so I guess um, I always like to say, don't stop what you're doing. Um, but add graphy data, add relationships to your existing machine learning pipelines to increase your accuracy. Interesting side note, uh, adding in graphy data and non-graphing data together actually is better than using just one or the other. So don't stop what you're doing, uh, but add in the relationship data to, to get that predictive list. 
So at this point, if you're wondering, okay, love the idea, why Neo4j on this? Well, we are the leader in graph analytics and uh, graph-based machine learning. We can help you do more data science with less hassle or less pain. So we have more graph algorithms than any other vendor. We're around 60 now in six different categories. We're always adding more. Um, we also have automated, very powerful transformations of the data. So whether you're transforming it from the storage format to the analytics format, we automate that so your data scientists don't have to do that. Or whether you're a data science scientist doing different experimentation, we know it's an iterative process. You have to uh, slice and splice your data and reshape it for different problems. If you're asking a different question, you often have to look at different data and being able to do that in memory just allows you to iterate as fast as, uh, as, fast as possible. We also provide state-of-the-science machine learning. So we are the only vendor to provide a fully in-graph machine learning on the market. That means that your graph can both be the input for various any type of classic machine learning using graph features, or your graph can actually be the output. So you can actually predict things about the graph itself, how your network is going to evolve over time. Um, so kind of two sides of that, I guess, puzzle or that, that coin that we're able to provide. And then finally, we're the fastest path to getting graph data science in production. So we do a lot to make sure that the results outside of Neo4j, once you've, once you've got your great algorithm results, um, can be scaled, normalized in a very machine, uh, friend, machine learning friendly way. So again, your data scientists don't have to do that. We support uh, machine learning uh, operations, ML ops, with things like deployable models. So you can store your models, your trained models in Neo4j, have admin controls, uh, have model lineage, check how models perform against each other. And then we also uh, do things like uh, provide ability to daisy chain models together so that you can have kind of create almost like template templates and recipes for your data scientists. And then of course, if we're talking about production, it's gotta be enterprise scalable. Uh, we have done a lot to make sure our graph algorithms are highly parallelized to scale over tens of billions of nodes in production, as well as create a very condensed in-memory footprint for enterprise uh, customers as well. So you can get the really large graphs in up to 75% less uh, footprint as well. So trying to help you uh, get in production quick, use state of the science machine learning and basically do more of what you need to do, do more data science with, with less hassle. So I'm just gonna leave this up. You can, we've got a lot of resources online, uh, everything from videos to white papers, case studies and, and books as well. And I encourage you to enjoy the rest of the day. So thank you, everybody. Thanks for your attention. Great. Thanks so much, Amy. I just want to remind the audience that Amy will be joining us later today for the expert panel uh, discussion. So you can save your questions for her for later today. Um, and stay tuned. Our next session uh, featuring our guests from NASA will be starting shortly. Thanks so much.